It suits my extroverted personality to a T. I think DJing, to me, is uh, an instrument. It is. It may not be a guitar or a piano, but to me, DJing uh, takes a certain set of skills uh, with a lot of practice. So um, I think I started in uh, 1989. I was mentored by an older DJ, and it was a club DJ, and. I fell in love with it. I just saw how he commanded the dance floor, uh, how everybody was happy, everybody danced the night away, and that, and that that gave me a rush. That gave me a rush. It's like performing on your own stage, you know, where, where you're commanding the crowd, the audience. It, it was pretty exhilarating. I think seeing that just everyone's happy. Um, it's different than a corporate event. I like doing corporate events as well, but I, and and school dances, but a, a wedding, there's just a, a different atmosphere where they celebrate a newly formed couple um, and it's all about them, right? It's it's seeing the, the gladness in their hearts, the beaming parents proud of their, you know, their, their newlywed son or daughter. And um, I just, it's overwhelming, it's over. it really is. I, I enjoy doing weddings because of how glad and happy everybody is at the end of the night. The speeches. The speeches can be quite hilarious. Um, I've heard some pretty funny ones uh, with a little personal touch on the end. And I've also heard some very touching ones that kind of bring a tear to everybody's eye in the room. So um, that's one of my favorite parts as a guest. I think what builds a good wedding style is, is the venue where it's at. I think that if, and I bring the proper sound equipment for any venue, so whether it's rolling hills uh, on a farm, or whether it's uh, a large hall, or a medium-sized hall, or a church, or, or even a small banquet facility, um, I think as long as the decorations are elegant, that's you know up to the bride and, and, and her selection. It's all about her. She's, she's the queen of the day. But I think that, uh, I personally, I love hearing the music just broadcasting over the, the rolling hills of a great farm wedding, huge farm wedding. That's one of my favorite, favorite things. It's small enough to where, you know, it fills the tent and it's not overpowering, but if you're walking down and you're trying to get away from the crowd for a minute, you can still hear the music and it's just, it's, it makes for a really lovely night. My favorite wedding experience is the sparkler send off. I love seeing that, you know, the hearts, just filled with love, all their friends lined up in a row, you know, walking the gauntlet of sparklers just makes for a pretty epic photo opportunity as well. But it's a great send off. I love playing that last song of the night, whether it's their, their first dance song or something upbeat that they're, they're getting whisked away, you know, wherever they're going to their honeymoon. Um, just seeing that at the end of the night, knowing that everybody was happy and everybody had a great time and that they're just, excited to start this new adventure together. Um, one of the worst experiences that ended up turning into a great experience, uh, bride was running late to an outdoor wedding. Um, she was coming from the church to the reception site and running probably about a half hour late. Had she gotten there on time, we could have had the entire ceremony and everything done. It was a short ceremony outside, but when she showed up, Literally, as soon as um, the father handed her over to her would-be groom, uh, it, the skies opened and it poured. Um, but the sweet side of that was the rainbow towards the end of the night, just before dusk. Um, it was a great photo opportunity. I mean, what could you ask? You know, what better photo could you ask for for a rainbow on your wedding day? That was pretty cool. I wouldn't have ended it so early. We. We had a, a limited rental time and a limited budget back when I was a lot younger. And uh, we did it ourselves. We paid for our own wedding. So we had the, the hall where we were in. I wish we would have stayed longer and danced the night away uh, to the you know wee hours of the morning. That was, We had a great group of friends. But um, yeah, I think time, time was definitely, the food was perfect, the photos were perfect, the DJ was perfect. It just, we, we wish we could have stayed longer. I would say plan well in advance. I say a year mostly, but in reality, it depends on what you want. It depends on the budget. 
So if you want an elaborate wedding and your help paying for this wedding, uh, or it's your sole responsibility, then you're gonna need to save. So I'd say two to three years for savings wise, but planning ahead, getting your caterers lined up at least a year, getting your flowers at least a year and your DJ a year as well. Um, I know from all the professionals I work with, our schedules are usually booked at least a year out. So, um, and decide what's important. If, if the flowers are more important than the food, or if the DJ is more important than the venue space, um, you can tailor your budget to that and you're, there's no surprises in the end. I'm Nate Clancy with I'mTheDJ.net. I've been in business for uh, being a wedding DJ for 15 years. Prior to that, I was a club DJ. So I can actually mix beats and uh, read a crowd and, and see what fills the dance floor. Um, I pay particularly uh, close attention to your requests. I want to make sure that your day is perfect. I want to make sure that you guys, at the end of the night, you guys, are, your hearts are, are glad and that your guests are happy and everyone leaves uh, extremely blessed.